I want to illustrate simple harmonic motion using a mass spring system. We're suspending the mass from the spring and the other end of the spring is attached to a, a fixed rigid object. The period of the motion is the time required for one oscillation. Boom, boom, boom. So it's the time between booms. And uh, that's denoted by T in this equation. It's 2 pi. The square root of the mass of the, uh, that you're hanging on the end of the, of the spring and the spring constant K that's related to Hooke's law that we talked about before. The other important parameter is the amplitude of the motion. The, in order to determine the amplitude, you have to first figure out where the equilibrium position is. And that's the position at which this mass is not moving at all. So it looks to be at about 19 centimeters from the support up here. The amplitude is defined as the distance between the equilibrium position, and I'm talking here about the top of the, of the brass cylinder here, where it meets the, the meter stick here at about 19 centimeters. The amplitude is defined as the, ex, the amount of excursion from the equilibrium position. So to create an amplitude, a motion with an amplitude of one centimeter, I'm going to want to move this mass one centimeter up and release it. And so now it's oscillating roughly between 18 centimeters and 20 centimeters. I could have done the same thing by moving it down to 20 centimeters and then the overall motion is still two centimeters from top to bottom but only one centimeter between the equilibrium position and one of the maximum positions. So now we want to look at the dependence of the period on the mass and the spring constant and also the amplitude. First, uh, first the amplitude and in order to just get a rough idea about how the period depends on amplitude, then let me look at a couple of different amplitudes. Here's a, here's a fairly small amplitude. Boom, 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 boom. Here's a medium amplitude. Boom, 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 boom. And here's a large one. Boom, 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 boom. Then back to the small one again, and we're just getting a rough measurement here. Boom, boom, boom. I think you can tell that the amplitude or that the period doesn't seem to be depending much, if at all, on the amplitude. And in fact, the mathematics bears this out. The period T has no dependence on the amplitude of the motion. But it does depend on the mass. So let's look at the period as a function of the mass by adding a, a bigger mass. You can remember how fast the last one was going. Uh, first thing to notice is that our equilibrium position is no longer at 19 centimeters. It's down at around 36 centimeters. And then if I give it uh, some motion and look at the period, the period is now boom, 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 boom. It's slower, takes longer. So that means um, a, uh, the period is the time between uh, a time for com one complete oscillation. So that's from here back down to here again. That time is now longer with a bigger mass. Exactly as predicted by the equation, if you increase the mass, it's in the numerator here, uh, that will increase the period or the time for one complete oscillation. And then bringing this to the extreme, even longer period, equilibrium position much lower, um, boom, 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 boom. Very, very long period motion. So how does this depend on the spring constant K? 
get the dependence on the mass down. The period depends on one over the square root of the spring constant. If I use two springs instead of one, I thereby doubled the spring constant. So let's compare the period with just one, one spring and this large mass. Boom, 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 boom. And the same mass with two springs. You know first that the equilibrium position is higher because we got more force pulling it up to counteract gravity. Boom, boom, boom. A little bit faster. Faster period. So a shorter period that is. So if you increase the spring constant, you're going to decrease the period. It's a shorter period uh, and when that period, the time between oscillations is smaller, that means it's a faster oscillation. It takes less time to do one oscillation. So the mass spring system, its period depends on the, the mass, the spring constant, but not the amplitude of the motion and um, the frequency you can always get the, the frequency from the period as one over the period. So if you like thinking in terms of, of frequencies better than thinking in terms of periods, um, the higher the period, the longer the period, the shorter the frequency and vice versa. Thanks very much. Okay, in that demo video I introduced um, this equation for the period of a mass spring system. And uh, this concept, the purpose of this concept is to show how this comes from Newton's second law. So this is the equation that, that we talked about in the, in the demo video. There's a 2 pi here, there's the square root of m, which is the mass of the mass of the object you're hanging at the end of the spring and K is the spring constant or elastic constant measured in Newton's per meter. Where does that come about? Uh, if we start off with Newton's second law, the sum on forces in the X direction um, and just for simplicity's sake, let's just do it for a, for a horizontal spring. It works out to be the same thing for a vertical spring as well. But for a horizontal spring, um, that's with the mass that's moving along a horizontal surface um, and it's going to be a frictionless surface we're going to assume. It has only one force acting on it, the spring force and that force is minus kx. But by Newton's second law, so this is x direction, by Newton's second law the force which is minus kx equals the mass times the acceleration in the x direction. But as you remember, the acceleration and the displacement both reach their maximums at the same place. So for example, at time t equals zero, when you stretch this um, <coughs> you're gonna, at time t equals zero, you're gonna stretch this out and release it from rest at its maximum position. And at that maximum position, x is just a. And ax is minus a omega squared. So we're just replacing x with x max, which is just the amplitude, and the acceleration with uh, acceleration maximum. Well, some miracles occur here. The a's cancel, the minus signs cancel, and we can solve for omega squared by dividing both sides by m masses cancel and we get omega squared equals k over m. Well to find omega you just take the square root. So that's how you find omega and um, then to find the period, the period is 2 pi divided by omega. Omega is 2 pi over the period. But I can multiply uh, both sides by t and divide both sides by omega 
to show that the period is 2 pi divided by omega. Here's the 2 pi. 1 over omega is just this inverted. So it'll be m over k. So that's a relationship. And it shows that, as we talked about, as we demonstrated in the, in the video, if you increase the mass, you're going to increase the period. You're going to increase the time it takes for one complete oscillation. It's going to be going slower. If you increase the spring constant, you're going to decrease the period. It's going to be going faster. A uh, block of mass m is attached to one end of a spring that has a spring constant k. The other end of the spring is attached to a wall. The block is free to slide on a frictionless floor. The block is displaced from the position where the spring is neither stretched nor compressed and released. Just what we talked about before. It is observed to oscillate with a frequency f. Which one of the following actions would increase the frequency of motion? Well, uh, the period is that. Actually, it's more convenient to actually use uh, the frequency omega squared to k over m, which shows up right here. It's part of the derivation. Omega And here we're talking about a frequency f. So this frequency f, to find it, get it all on a, uh, on a side all by itself, we're going to divide both sides by 2 pi. So f is 1 over 2 pi square root of k over m. Isn't that neat? This equation is so cool. So, we are asking which one of the following actions would increase the frequency. So we're not talking about period anymore like we did in the demo video. We're talking about frequency. Which one would increase the frequency? So I want a frequency that get, gets bigger. So what if we decrease the mass of the block? If this thing gets smaller, mass is in the denominator. And if it gets smaller, then this whole thing on the right-hand side gets bigger because their uh, frequency is inversely proportional. So decreasing the mass is going to increase the frequency. So there's our answer right there. We could decrease the mass. What about reducing the spring constant? Um, if you make this guy smaller, since f is proportional to the square root of k, you're going to make f smaller. So that will not definitely make it bigger. Reduce the distance that the spring is initially stretched. Well, this is related to the amplitude. Um, if, you, if you don't pull it very far and you release it from rest versus pulling it a long way and releasing it from rest, how will that change? How will that affect the frequency? And as we saw in the video, and as you can see with this equation, the amplitude a doesn't appear anywhere in this equation, and so that uh, changing the amplitude doesn't um, doesn't affect the frequency at all. Then increase the distance that the spring is initially stretched. Um, Okay, so here we're increased, here we're reducing it, and here we're increasing it. Same thing. Changing the amplitude does not change the frequency. A 12 kilogram spring mounted chair is used to measure an astronaut's mass. Can't use scales up on the, on the sp uh, space shuttle. If you stand on the scale, you'll read zero because the scale and you and the whole aircraft are, are all falling toward the Earth. So they use this uh, kind of a device. The spring constant, so there's a, um, some kind of a spring, and, and she oscillates back and forth. And the period is 2.41 uh, seconds. So I think what they've done um, 
to reduce, to try and make her more of a rigid body rotation is to scrunch her body up as much as possible so that, so that her body's flexing doesn't affect the measurement. So we know what the period is, it's 2.41 seconds, and we want to find the mass of the astronaut. The chair itself is 12 kilograms, and we're trying to find, uh, so that's the mass of the chair, and then we got the mass of the astronaut. So the period is 2 pi square root of m over k, like we did in the demo and like we talked about in the last slide. The total mass is going to be her mass plus the mass of the chair, divided by the spring constant. Well, we actually have the spring constant k. We're trying to find her mass. So how could we go about and do this algebra? And the answer is, if I'm going to find her mass, I'm going to have to get it all, on, all by itself on one side of the equation. I'm going to have to get it out of this square root sign. So I'm going to square both sides of the equation to start off with. t squared, 4 pi squared, uh, and then ma plus mc over k. Then I can multiply both sides by k to kill this k, and it'll appear on the left side. And then I can divide or subtract off mc. So this is the equation that I'll need to find her mass. Plugging in the numbers, we've got k, we've got the period, we've got 4 pi squared minus the mass of the chair, and that gives a, a mass of about 77 kilograms. Pretty cool.